<laughs> You're listening to the Barn Church Podcast. Phil brought it home for part three of first and second. Listen in. What he wanted to share with us was an insightful look at the Ten Commandments. That's right, those Ten Commandments. He posited something very interesting. Phil let us know that if we could get a hold and just take care of the first four commandments, there would be no need for us to have to worry about the other six. It's a profound look at what it means to be a follower of the Lord. Stay tuned because a new episode is starting right now. Well, welcome back to another Barn Church podcast. It is Sunday, December 17th. I don't often get to do our podcasts on the day that the message was given, but because this man is a hard-working man, <laughs> he's a hard-working man, uh. he and I chatted, and we decided it would probably be best to do it today because, I mean, he's already here. I'm already here. We're rocking and rolling. It's fresh revelation, and so we're going to go with it. And so by the time you guys hear this on Friday of this week, you're going to have a little bit more time to ruminate on what Phil brought today. Awesome. So I thought it was awesome. So we're on the series first and second. We have Phil rocking it out today. He is sitting in the hot seat, and we are going to just break right in because there is no time to waste i have uh, lunch plans you have lunch plans right, right, we're gonna yep. we're gonna just hit it hard so you began this sermon today kind of going back and hitting some of the key points from the previous two speakers michael swan and kara mcclean right mm-hmm. and so you kind of rehashed some of their more um, poignant points Mm -hmm. and the things that we really should be taking away from this series. And so when you brought it in for us this morning, you developed and delivered on a promise that you were going to rock it out. Oh, okay. Yes, you did. Okay. You you rocked it out. Thank you. So, and you started it off by making sure we knew why the first and second. Mm Mm-hmm and where they came from. Mm-hmm. So why don't you tell us a little bit about uh, your, your, your story on what you led into for today. One of the Ten Commandments, uh, I, I put up on, I had Scotty put them up on uh, the screen so everyone could read them. And the first four of the commandments are basically between God and man. And the, the last six are basically dealing with man-to-man issues. The last two have to do with your neighbor, which is what um, the second commandment, the greatest commandment, is that you love your neighbor as yourself. And I spoke about how if we could just manage to follow the first four of those commandments, it wouldn't be necessary to have the rest. Because if we're just putting our love, our trust, and everything we have into God— we won't be dealing with those things because all that stuff will just fall off of us like dirt on a rag. I think that's something that's very, very, very interesting. So let's let's break it down real quick. So the uh, first four commandments um, that God gave to Moses were, shall have no other gods before me. Do not bow down or worship any graven images. Do not use the Lord's name in vain. And remember to honor the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. So you're telling me, Phil, if I'm not mistaken, you're saying if every one of us that has the indwelling of the Holy Spirit within us. Correct. um, That we have been bought by the blood of the Lamb, okay? And God is our Father. That if we could just adhere faithfully to those four commandments, we wouldn't need to even worry about the other six. Correct. That is crazy. That is not crazy. Let me tell you something. (laughs) Y'all remember, um, what the heck was his name? The great evangelist. Oh, shoot. Reinhard Bonnke? No, no. Not that guy. There's another later, guy. Later, uh, before that, before Both. all of them. Uh, anyway, uh, he said that when men and women walk in faith, obstacles are removed, circumstances change, disease leaves, and sin falls away. 
So if you were to follow just those four by faith, um, that's all you need. The rest is gravy. And we wouldn't have to worry about man-to-man issues because we'd be so in love with Jesus and so in love with God that we wouldn't want to cause any kind of trouble with our brothers and sisters. So that's my take on it. I agree with you, And I believe I'm perfectly correct when I say if you will just put your heart and your soul and your love into God, the rest of your life is gravy, period. So— For those of you listening right now, you're probably going, okay, so what does he mean by gravy? What I'm, I think it it ain't, I mean, it could be the stuff you put on top of biscuits in the South. I mean, that's where I come from. So, you know, that's kind of what I think. But I think more in depth is that the gravy is the things you don't have to worry about, right? The things that will end up fixing themselves in the long run. Uh, When you focus on God, he has a way of smoothing out the crooked places, making everything kind of work for your good. And that's what scripture says. He's doing all things for our benefit, for our good. So if we just focus on worshiping him in spirit and in truth, we won't have to worry about all of the junk because we will be walking in the power and anointing of just following those first four commandments. That's right. Okay. Mm-hmm. So I'm, I'm ju- that well, was just a, a break. That was a, gravy. <laughs> that was a breakdown of what Phil means by gravy. But what I believe that this is so, I, I wouldn't say interesting, but I believe it is so foundationally um, imperative. And it's not really apparent for a lot of people. Correct. They get a lot. They, everybody gets in the weeds on stuff because we want to make it hard. We we think everything's got to be hard. Well, we want we want justifications for why we don't have to do something or or, or that too. But you know, it, it's you know, you think well, in order for me to follow those first four, oh, that's a lot of work. That's a lot of time. I got to give to God. No, you start developing a relationship with God, and all you're going to want to do is relate to Him. You won't want anything else. By the way, the guy's name was. Um, Never mind. Lost it again. In and out. <laughs> <laughs> Senior moment for me. <laughs> <laughs> Smith Wigglesworth. Smith Wigglesworth. I had to say it before Smith I lost Wigglesworth. it. Smith Wigglesworth. M for a thousand, Alex. Uh, the, we need to focus on loving God oh, oh, well. 100%. If that's all you did was love God, everything else would just fall in line. So Jesus then clarified that when he was talking to the Pharisees. Um, they were like, well, what is the greatest commandment? To love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, and mind. And the second is like it. Exactly. Right? So yeah. uh, the love your neighbor as yourself. And, and I know Michael and Kara, you know, when they've sat down before, we've talked about these things. And it was uh, always good to hear the perspective from the apostolic and the prophetic. But the heart of the father really is for his kids to get along and stop bickering and complaining so much. Amen. 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 You know, we, we can bring the correction. We can bring the, the um, you know, the fire of the father. Uh, but what sometimes we really need is the heart of the father to kind of tell us why we just i mean why would we want to do all of this stuff phil why give me give me give me a good reason why i should love the lord thy god my god with all my heart soul and mind and love my neighbor as myself why because if you do that you'll never be touched by the enemy there will be no enemy in your life you will be perfectly fine. You won't let the enemy upset you. He won't take your peace. He won't take your joy. And he certainly can't take your righteousness because that was given to us by Jesus. Sealed by the blood of the Lamb. Amen. And it all through the Holy Spirit. Righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. If we're walking in peace and in joy, there's no way the devil's going to be able to get in there and screw up our lives. The longer, the more we stay in tune with God, and keep our eyes fixed on him. That's all we need. The rest is gravy. So in the in the day-to-day world, I'm going to hit a practicality for you. Mm-hmm. Because uh, as a teacher, I kind of like those. Right? <laughs> and um, you're a good one, too. I, I try to exist in that space where I'm loving him and I'm loving others, right? Mm-hmm. But there are times... There are times where hardship and trials will come to us. Look at Job, for instance. He, he was a righteous man. 
in the eyes of God. Mm -hmm. And Satan came to petition for the removal of God's hand of protection off of Job because Satan's whole point was to see that he wasn't really as holy or he really didn't love you or love God the way that God thought Job loved him. Well, the thing is, is obviously we know God only knows the heart. Mm -hmm. the, the Lord knows the heart condition of every single person on this planet. And with that being said, I would like to look at the aspect of what can the average person, average church goer do in process of making sure that they're untouchable by the enemy besides like give me i want some practicals what can they do to show that they love the lord thy god with other heart soul and mind what can they do to love their neighbor as their as themselves well it's uh and then speaking of job he did have one issue about fear sure he says the things that i have dreaded have come upon me sure and so he kind of opened up his heart for the devil to step in and it was only because job allowed him to to enter into his life, that all that stuff happened to him. Um, this is the way I look at it. If we are, I mean, and, and I know when I say constantly, um, I don't mean constantly, but I mean on a regular basis. We have to understand the heart of God. We have to. And the only way we can understand his heart is by reading, studying, and diving into the Word of God. Okay, so... Do we do that just on Sundays, Phil? Of course not. We okay. do that Absolutely. every day of the That's week. Right. And, you know, I always tell them, uh, there's a bunch of guys that I discipled in my earlier days, and I would tell them, I'm not concerned about your conduct right now. They would just got saved, and, and some of them were pretty, you know, pretty rough. I said, don't worry about your concept, or, or I'm sorry, not conduct. Concept. Don't worry about your conduct. All I want you to do is spend time in the Word. If you'll spend 50 minutes a day in the Word of God, it will change your life. If you spend more than 15 minutes a day and start studying it and breaking out the commentaries in the encyclopedias and the dictionaries and get into the Word of God, then it will blow your mind away. And so the Word of God is so important, and when we train ourselves to understand and sometimes we have to memorize it. There's things that I've memorized, um, that, and, and also there's, there's, there's several examples of other things we could do as well as reading. You can read the Word, but you also got to meditate on it. You know what meditate means? means like a cow chewing the cud. Yep. You have to just think about that word. I, every every night I go to bed, um, when I read the scriptures before I go to bed, I take some time to, to meditate on what God has just, uh, what I've just read in his word. And I'm telling you, that lasts, gets you thinking, gets you growing. God starts to build and um, uh, move inside your your spirit, and uh, that's so important that we spend time not only reading it but thinking about it. Amen. If the word of God is on our mind all the time, there's no room for the enemy to get in there and mess it up, for the enemy or for the flesh, our own flesh. So, I'm a real, uh, really, really particular about staying in the word, and I tell all the guys that I'm still discipling. You got to stay in that word. Every time they come to me with a problem, the first thing I ask them, have you been in the word? And guess what the answer is? No. That's why you got a problem. <laughs> it's very simple. <laughs> <laughs> the simplest answers are the ones that's we it. don't that's want. It. Yeah, and that's God designed the word of God to work that way. So that once your spirit and your spirit needs to be fed just like. We need to feed our body. Correct. If you don't feed our spirit, which is with the word, it's food for the spirit. If you don't feed the spirit, then it's going to eventually, it's just going to kind of walk away. So you have to be able to feed your spirit on a regular basis every single day, every single day. 15 minutes. Who can't do 15 minutes, Jared? 
Who can't I can do, do that? 15 minutes. I can do 15 minutes. Yeah. If you have no time in the world, you got other problems. Oh, for crying out loud. Come on. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're, let's just be honest with you. Every one of us has five minutes here, five minutes there, and another five minutes somewhere else. If you can break, if you have to break it down like that, it really just comes down to intentionality, desire of heart, desire of listening and learning what the Lord is trying to tell us mm-hmm. individually as well as a collective church body Mm -hmm. so i look at it as an intentionality kind of thing if we do not have an intentional purpose to involve ourselves with the word of god great then we are involving ourselves intentionally with the cares and the problems of this world right exactly and it, 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 the our minds will focus on something else other than we're going for not it absolutely exactly. will it'll naturally go there because you know we do have a fallen nature yep so. we do and one of the things that i mean i'm going to say this in practicum for all those people listening right now uh when he is saying meditate there there's a few passages of scripture that have taken me by storm this year Now, I have read through the Bible, I have read through it a number of times, but I am learning the art of focusing on the depth that a particular passage of Scripture can contain, and I'm focusing on that. I'm applying it to my life. One of the most recent ones was, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all of these things will be added unto you. I'm not looking Amen. for the added unto you as a way to receive blessing for myself. My focus has been, seek first the kingdom of God. And so when Phil is talking about this, y'all, I just want to break this down. What he's saying is, is seek first the kingdom of God. What he said before in another way was if you focus on God, you focus on him, you focus on the first four commandments, all of the stuff is gravy. He just summarized, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all of these things will be added unto you. you. That right, And yeah. those were the words of Jesus. If mm-hmm. Phil was sitting right here with Jesus in this room right now, and I bet you 100%, if Phil just said, if people focused on your father, all life would be gravy, the Lord would look at him and go, Absolutely. Because what did Jesus say? Seek first the kingdom of God and all of his righteousness and all of these things will be added unto you. Mm -hmm. Come on now. That is so stinking simple. And the thing that you say all the time is we got to get rid of our stinking thinking. And the only way we get rid of our stinking thinking is if we train ourselves to think on the higher things. And we focus on the beautiful things. We focus on the things that bring life, not death. We focus on the things that bring his kingdom to us and his kingdom to earth and not focus on the things where we are embattled or battling other things. Mm -hmm. So it's perfect when this is applied simply. Right. Simply. Right. And here's another simple thing. Break it down. Um, Stay with, uh, just focus on the scripture, focus on the Lord, and, um, uh, crap, I just lost it, Jared. Move on. Uh, (laughs) Well, the simple gospel is what transforms the heart of people. Mm -hmm. Yep, that's true. And it is the simplicity that Jesus brought and really displayed amongst his followers that had really a profound effect on the entirety of time. Imagine being one of those guys that got to hang around with Jesus all day long. Do you not think, this is what it was I was going to say, do you not think that they would be thinking like Christ? I mean, they're listening to him, they're following him, excuse me, and What's I mean, you're looking, you're following, you're listening to, eventually you're going to be able to think like he thinks. And to be able to think like God, that's an awesome thing, an awesome, awesome thing. And so meditate on that for a while. Meditate on thinking of the way God thinks. Look at things the way God looks at things. Ask the questions that God would ask, you know? I mean, those are the deeper things that he will give to us if we just spend time with him. That's correct. Mm-hmm. If we just spend spend time, time with him. him, right, right. 
And the more time we spend in the Word, the more we're going to think like Him. The more we're going to act like Him. The more we're going to be like Him. But Phil, I don't want to be more like Him. I want to be more like me. There's some guy on TV. He's got all the riches in the world. I want to start thinking like him. Why can't? Why can't I have both? Because you're an idiot. You don't need both. <laughs> You just need one. <laughs> he did not display pastoral grace in that comment. <laughs> but uh. it's the truth. <laughs> you know, I, I, I've had friends in the past, mm-hmm. um, and you know, like we all do, who uh, are wrapped up in the rat race mm-hmm. of trying to, you know. Get ahead. Get ahead. Yeah, you know, get the, you. Keeping up with the Joneses. I was there for a long time. I chased money forever. Finally, one day, the Lord said, if you will stop chasing money and start chasing me, You'll have all the money you need. And it's the truth, because your focus is on a completely different thing. Exactly. It's he, gravy, man. That's gravy. That is, and I'll tell you, my wife and I, um, earlier this year, the Lord led us to really get into a wilderness season. Uh, we were greatly impacted by a conference that we went to down in North Carolina. And, uh, you know, the wisdom from that conference was basically, you know, you can put yourself in the wilderness before God does. It's you either willingly go or you hesitantly go. Look, think of Steve Pixar. Shared Correct. that same yeah, kind of story. He, yeah. he did. Yep. And I uh, thought it was a great cap off on like uh, the Lord showing my wife and I that, you know, we were faithful in what he had asked us to do. And he has caused blessing to come to our door because of it. And, and, and we're, Amen. But our focus wasn't doing it for the benefit. Our focus was just being obedient. Mm -hmm. So the lovely thing that I see here is we have opportunities to just obey correct? um, because he commands us to, or we have an opportunity to obey because we love him. Right. And I think that really is truly the heart of it is. I think that really is the heart of it is that is what God wants from us. He wants our heart to ever be pondering and focusing on him, his word, meditating day and night, because Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. when we give room for the enemy, Mm -hmm. he will come in like a flood and he will overtake us. And, you know, it, 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 it's obviously not enough to just be in the word. Mm Mm-hmm. We need to be. You need worship. a fellowship. You, you need, need a fellowship. In, correct. And right. so, yeah. you know, there, there's expansions and a precept upon precept, right? So you give them, right. you give the people that uh, need the, you know, the milk, and you give them the milk, and that's what we're hoping people understand. And this message series will conclude next week mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and then we'll have uh a couple of uh services right. you did need to you're teaching next week That'd i am great. teaching yeah. next mm-hmm. week um but i'm i'm getting to tie in for the first time ever when i'm kind of excited about this the uh the christmas story oh um, okay even yeah. though even though we all know jesus was not literally born on december 25th <laughs> it is a it is a a date that was picked from and for many reasons. Right. So I'm not going to get into the, all the details on that because that's a whole other podcast for a complete other time. Um, but the whole point of this message series was for us to really end the year acknowledging and remembering mm. the easiness mm. of the gospel mm. and how Amen. Jesus made it so super easy mm. to just cut out all the noise and focus on his voice. And the easiest way to focus on his voice is exactly what you say. Get in his word every single day. Just focus on him. Pray as, you know, as directed in the scriptures. It was pray without ceasing. We, we, a lot of us don't even know how that works. We can, you know. Your whole life is a prayer. You should be just focusing on him 24-7. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Yep. And, uh, you know, we all fall short. I mean, that's what Romans states. You know, we right. all fall short of the glory mm-hmm. of God. We yep. all need him. Mm-hmm. And, and it's a practice. And so there's a uh, brother Lawrence. If you have this book at uh, at your house or if you know of somebody that needs it, you can still find it. I think it's still in print. He said, practicing the presence of God. 
Okay, mm-hmm. that was a book by the uh, by a guy named Brother Lawrence, who was a, a monk. And one of the things that he gets into is you got to just be in a constant state of just remembering all the good things that God has done in your life, be in a constant state of just remembering his word, his promises, repeat those promises back to him. And God wants to know what you know, Mm -hmm. but he doesn't want you to override what he is telling you to do because you think you know better than him. And a lot of us, (laughs) a lot of us, we like, well, you don't really know. Well, he literally made everything. So why don't you just put that to rest and stop being a ding dong about it, right? (laughs) Um, Jesus is real. God is real. Holy Spirit is available for all of us to tap into. And we can have an indwelling right now. Mm -hmm. You can have an indwelling right Mm -hmm. now. You can have a cohabitation. Oh, I like that word. Yeah. We can have an inhabitation and a cohabitation. There you go. So the Spirit inhabits us. And we are so enamored with the presence of God, we cohabitate with it. Mm -hmm. I remember seeing you on Friday. Uh, You were playing your your instrument for Friday Night Lights, and you were weeping and crying because God had just was overpowering you. And I could see it. I was right in front of you praying, and, and I could see that. And that's God doesn't want us perfect. He just wants our heart. If we can just remember that, at all times, um, that's just one step that we'll be m- making towards heaven is just giving him our heart. Amen. Well, it was a profound service on Friday. Yes, it was. And uh, yes, I'm was. looking forward to the days where we are able to do it all the time. You know, that's really where my but, focus but is. But being in that presence, wasn't it awesome? It's always awesome. What, was there anything else that you were ta- thinking about at that time other than just God? So the Lord had laid something on my heart earlier that day, and I kind of shared it with the team. And, uh, you know, I I like to, I don't have vain imaginations very often. Um, you know, just like the vain imaginations of, of, you know, well, I can't say that. I really would love to have a, a recording studio um, here available for all the people to like, you know, write songs because we we're writing all yeah. the time. Yeah. Um, we were able to uh, do one of the songs that God had given us this morning. Um, for Which one was it? That was ignite the fire. Oh, okay. All right. Um, and uh, you know, we see, I didn't know you guys were writing your own stuff. Yeah. Yeah. yeah we, that's, we've that's been amazing. Writing, um, you know, ever since we had the, um, the F five conference, um, we had sought out to have at least three or four songs and, you know, we did everything we could and, you know, just, you know, never really panned out to that many, but we had at least, at least two to three. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, and so we just continue to do that, continue to do that. But I was believing and I was sitting in, in like the entryway of my house in one of my chairs and I just kind of fixed my eyes on a spot on on the wall by my window and I just started imagining what it would be like for me to see Jesus far off and I just remember going is that him? and as he would draw closer it's Jesus is that Jesus? And as he would draw, draw, draw closer and closer, and finally, when he is within like, like sprint, sprinting distance, I, I just had this thought: I would just roar, "It is, it is my beloved!" And I would just run towards him, and just embrace him with the most like amazing, like, "Hey, I have missed you. I have wanted to meet you and see you, and and feel you, and and acknowledge your presence in such a way." That was so real to me in that moment. That was what I would consider one of those holy imagination moments. And it was just, it encompassed something. So I was thinking about that and pondering that almost all day. And I was pondering that even on Friday night, maybe during that time where I was crying, weeping, whatever you saw. I don't remember half of what happened on Friday. <laughs> um, but I, I just remember pondering that because that's what I so want. It's not that I think that my Christian walk is going to change um, whether I see him or not see him. But I will tell you the heart that I have 
is that I just want to, I long to see him. I long to be with my beloved. I, I long to be with Jesus. <laughs> Amen. I want to be in the throne room. I want to exist in the presence of the Lord. I don't want to depart from it because it would feel like pain and torture. And when you have that acknowledgement in your life, I believe it's so much easier for you to go, when I've tasted and I've seen that the Lord is good, I would never want anything to pull me away from that, including my own self. Mm -hmm. And so I will, I will do, I will strive, I will ignite whatever I need to do, strive and ignite in my life to continue that passion to follow after the Lord. That's what it is about. It's about the purifying of the bride. I am part of that bride yep. because the church is his bride. Mm -hmm. And he will return for us one day, and he will take us back to his father and say, this is my bride, and they are purified. Amen. And that's what I'm looking forward to. Mm -hmm. yep. And so the only way we can really do that is by loving the Lord our God with all of our heart, soul, and mind. Amen. And Amen. Loving our neighbor as ourself. Yep. That is the most perfect thing that we can do. Jesus knew the condition of all of our hearts, and he wants us to focus on what really, truly matters. Right. Yep. Amen. Yep. And that's it. Don't you just sometimes envy the fact, I wish I could have been John, laying my head on his shoulder. Oh, man, that would have been awesome. Hearing his heartbeat. You know, just smelling him. I mean, it just just would have been just yeah. amazing. How cocky that guy was! As I was the <laughs> I was the disciple that Jesus loved. Like, okay, whatever, dude. You know, I'm sure he loved all of them. You know, but uh, and he did. But he you know, did. <laughs> that's my point. Is that John was very that was a, he had a very special relationship. He was with secure. Christ. Yeah. Oh man. Yeah. He was very secure. Very happy and content with yep. his life at that time. I'm yep. sure. So. Do you have anything anyway. else to share? Uh, no, that's it, man. All I right, appreciate good, man. the podcast. Absolutely. Yeah, it was fun doing it. Love you. All right. Well, All guys, right. we have one more opportunity for the first and second. Come and join us uh, on Sunday, the 24th. I get to share a special Christmas message and tie this whole series together. And uh, then obviously it is Christmas Day the following Monday. Guys, we love what God is doing in this house. We are inviting you to take part into what God is doing. Come and visit us on the 31st of December. We are going to be rolling our daytime and our Friday night service into one service that's going to happen on December 31st at 7 p.m. You are cordially and lovingly and desperately invited if you have nothing to do we're desperately inviting you to come out and hang out with us we're gonna have food we're gonna have fellowship we're gonna have worship we are gonna have a message Amen. and we want you guys to come and experience what god is doing in this place because god is moving man he is sending people here from all over the place he is sending he, i met somebody uh yesterday who, who is from kansas and god told him to come here and he didn't even know he existed and so it took a confirmation of a few different words from wow. other people in the periphery wow. Uh, in his life for him to go, okay, now I understand where it's, where I'm going. And I'm going to tell you, God knows our name. God mm. knows your Amen. name. Amen. And the closer you get to the courts of heaven and you involve yourself with what God is doing, the kingdom of God, he will add everything unto you. Let that be the truth that you seek today. Meditate on it day and night. And with that being said, we're going to put a pin it for it this week. We'll come at you next week with something fresh. Adios. Amen. Thanks for listening. We know God will move in your life and your heart through this message. The Barn Church and Ministries exist to create environments where people encounter Christ and are empowered to advance the kingdom. You can visit our website at www.thebarn.church. And if you want to follow us on social media, you can look for us on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube at The Barn Ministries. Send us an email to podcast at thebarn.church because we'd love to hear from you. And as always, if you'd like to visit us, our service times are Sundays at 10, 10 a.m.